Hello students, how are you doing? Now, welcome to St. Mary's British International School online class. I'm Mr. Benedict Ebuwa, the mathematics teacher. We're going to look at the topic today, geometric plane shapes. I know if you look around you at home, there are a lot of different shapes you see. Our circle, rectangle, square. We're going to discuss more in details today. Um, the subtopics we have are types of plane shapes and their properties, similarities and differences between the following square, rectangle, triangle, trapezium, parallelograms, and cycles. Uh, plane shapes. Most often it is known as what? 2D, 2D shapes. Yes, what are 2D shapes? They are any two-dimensional shape is known as a plane shape. Now, the plane shapes have the characteristics of flat surfaces, such as surfaces of a table, a chalkboard, like this interactive board, a football field, and so on. Now, types of plane shapes and their properties. Now, this is exactly a plane shape, it's flat surfaces. This shape is what known as what? A rectangle. How many of you know right angle? I know all of you know it. Okay, what about the cycle? This is also what? A plane shape, which is also a 2D shape. What about square? It's also a plane shape or 2D shape. Triangle, the same thing. Now, all these have smooth or well-defined edges. If you look at the edges, they're all well-defined. The cycle, the same thing, uh, the square and the triangle. Okay, they are called regular shapes. Now, because they are well defined, that's why they are called regular shapes. So, at this point, we can say these particular regular shapes are exactly the 2D shapes we are discussing. But mind you, we also have irregular shapes. They are also 2D shapes. Now, coming to this point, we can see these particular shapes are not regular. Sometimes you see it in square, it comes in a cup shape and so on. That's why they are called irregular shapes. Now, I know you love these pictures of these kind of shapes, but in mathematical way of solving problems involving them is complex. Unlike the regular shapes. When you are solving problems involving regular shapes, it's just direct because it is easier to do. When it comes to solve problems in irregular shapes, you have to, you know, put a lot of things into consideration. All these have curved surfaces, even though they are plane shapes. They do not have well-defined edges, as I earlier said, and they are called irregular what? shapes. I know you also have some other irregular shapes you have in mind. So, in the course of uh, this video, you should be able to, uh, be able to point it while you are documenting in your writing. Okay? Now. We are going to look at similarities and difference in the rectangles and square. Now, what let's look at the rectangles first. These are some of their properties. The following are the properties of what a rectangle. One, a rectangle has opposite sides equal and parallel. Please, can you go back to that shape? Now, this rectangle shape. This side are what? Equal and what? Parallel. These other sides are equal and also parallel. So that is how it is. Okay. All angles of the rectangles are at right angles. Please. Now, if you look at this shape, if you look at this particular plane, this is a right angle. This place is a right angle. This place is a right angle. This also place is a right angle. That is how you know the right angle shape. Okay. Or a, a rectangle has equal diagonals which bisect each other but not at right angle. Can you go back? Okay. Now, if you want to take a diagonal, uh, the diagonal of this, you take it this way, take it this other way. Now, please take note diagonal and line of symmetry they are different. Is that clear, student? Okay, 
It has two lines of symmetry on each plane. Now, when you are talking of line of symmetry, when you are talking of line of symmetry, it all shows that a line that divides a particular object into two equal halves. That is what a line of symmetry represents. Now, let's quickly look at square so that we can make a comparison between the right angle and square. All the four sides are equal. Now, this is square. Though. You can see this particular line here and this line are equal. This side and this side are also equal. So this represents what? A square. It says all the four lines are what? Equal. If there is four centimeter, there will be four centimeter, there will be four centimeter, definitely that place will also be what? Four centimeter. The diagonals are equal and perpendicular to each other. Now, when you say the diagonals are equal, it shows that if you measure from here to here, and measure from here to here, and measure from here to here, they are all equal. So you can see in square, you have uh, the diagonals are equal. That's what that is showing, telling us. A square has four lines of symmetry. Now, in the line of symmetry, as, as I said, you can share it into two halves, complete half. Like this. If you cut it in the diagonal format, cut the other way, it is four in line of symmetry in square. All angles of the square are right angles, and each angle is bisected by okay, by a right angle triangle. So that shows that. That is their properties. Now, the similarities they have is that in a right angle, they have an angle of 90 degrees by setting at each of them. The same thing happens with this square. So that is the similarity of the square and that of the rectangle. But if we want to know the difference now, the difference comes in when you are looking at the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry here is 2. What are the line of symmetry here is 4. So that is the difference. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now we are going to look at triangles and cycles. Now, in a triangle, triangle is a plane shape with three sides and three angles. Take note, there are even types, different types of the triangles. Now, but in a general sense, a triangle is what? It's a plane shape with what? Three sides and three angles. Irrespective of their classification, they have what? Three sides and three what? Angles. Now let's look at their types of triangles. They are skeletal triangles, isosceles triangles, and equilateral triangles. Now, why are we discussing to know more of them and their properties? Now, take notes. When we are solving, when we are trying to deal on, trying to look at perimeters, trying to look at areas, trying to look at some of other volumes, you should be able to know most of these properties. This property will guide you when you are doing your calculation. Now, triangles can also be classified with respect to their angles. That is the reason why we have the acute angles, the right angles, the obtuse angles. Coming to the cycle. A cycle, these are some of the things, the components that make up what a cycle. And as you go higher in your classes, if you know at this foundational level about cycle, you can be able to solve complex problems. Now let's look at the word curve. A curve is what? A straight line, not passing through the center, joining two points on the what? Second phrase. We shall know that in new terms with the diagram. Second friends, this is a what? The path traced around a cycle, otherwise called distance. Then an arc is what? A curved path of what? A circumference. There is a major arc and a minor arc. Please don't get worried. I will do the diagram to explain all of this. Diameter, a straight line. Passing through the center 
of a cycle. Radius is the distance between the center of the cycle to any part of the circumference. Now, continuation. As I just said about the triangle, that the triangle have the arctic. As I said about the triangle, that the triangle have the arctic angles, the right angles, and the obtuse angles. For the sake of emphasis, we are not dealing on the reflect angles, but we are going to rely only on these three: acute, right, and obtuse angles. Now, let's look at what is acute angle. Acute angle. The triangle in which all the angles' values are less than 90. When the value is less than 90, it shows that 89, is it not less than 90? I know you know it. It's less than 90. Now, but if you have 91, 91 should be greater than 90, so it's not what? An acute angle. Now, let's look at the right angle. A right angle triangle, this is a triangle with one angle equal to 90. When you say sum is equal to sum, you know it's 90 degrees. So, therefore, 90 degrees equal to 90 degrees. Yes, that's what you are talking about what a right angle triangle. Now, let's look at the obtuse angle. The obtuse angle triangle, this is a, what, a triangle with one of its angles greater than 90, but less than 180. This has a condition. The condition then is this 90, if you have 91, well, it's within the output of obtuse. But it should not exceed what? 180. The moment it exceeds 180, it shows that it's no longer what? An obtuse angle. This will be talking about the reflex angle. But we are not talking about reflex angle. We are only measuring the three types of uh, angle with respect of the triangle. Now, let's look at the cycle. Part of those cycles we have discussed, we have not mentioned that of the sector. What is a sector? A sector is a region bounded by two radi radii of cycle and arc, which I've discussed here when I'm using the diagram to illustrate. The segment, this is a region bounded by a curve of a cycle and an arc. It has both minor segment and major segment. Now let's quickly look at the diagram. Good. Take notes, please. If you have not been listening before, punch your circle light on this particular diagram because it will help us a lot. Because some of our uh, problems lies on this understanding this diagram. Now let's look at this diagram carefully. Now if you look at this diagram vertically like this, from C to D, this is known as a diameter. Diameter measurement from C to D is known as what? Diameter. Now let's look at this line AB. You discover that this line AB is not at exactly at the center of this cycle. The center of the cycle can be positioned in either in the horizontal line or the vertical line like this. But in the vertical line like this, it is equal. These two parts are equal. As you equally. But if you look at this in this other form, if you want to get an equal line on the horizontal, it will take somewhere here to draw down. But in this case, you draw the line a bit upper, you have it like this. So this particular line that is not passing through the center of the cycle is known as cord. We have already explained what the cord is. It's not passing through the center of the cycle. Now, because it's not passing through the center of the cycle, Let's look at the other one, known as the circumference. Now, generally, you all agree with me that circumference is exactly the actual distance, the circle, the, the outer circle, like this. This is known as the circumference. And now, if you want to take the distance of the circumference, as you go higher, the mathematics will tell you it's 2 pi r. But we're not going to deal on that yet, as we do in mathematical way. Uh, maybe in our next class, we shall be looking at the mathematical setting on how to calculate distance around the circumference, on how to calculate length of the course, and how to look at the angle of the sector, and how to calculate the radius. Remember, the radius cut out from the diameter, from the diameter. So that shows that in the radius it has the diameter. 
So the radius can be part of any of the length of this cycle, any part. But provided it comes out from the diameter. Is that taking student? Now, looking at the major segment and the minor segment, you discover that the arc, the curve, from this particular point to this point here is known as the minor arc. So the, the, the curve was able to you know, separate the minor arc from the major arc. So the major arc comes from there, up across, and ends at this point. So that is why they call it a major arc. Then what is it called a minor segment and a major segment? You discover that this patch here, the whole full patch here, is what? A minor segment. Why this whole part here full is what? A major segment. There are a lot of calculation involving all of these components that make up a cycle. So, uh, student, um, assignment. Your assignment is first, draw a equilateral triangle of side 6 cm, measure all the three angles. Are they equal? To be able to tell me whether they are equal or not. Two, draw a rectangle of length 5 cm and breadth 3.6 cm. Draw the diagonal intersecting at O. When you say something is intersecting at O, you know it's always at the center of the circle. What do you notice? Please, you also indicate that. Write down three properties common to the square and a rectangle. Please take note, you should be able to do that for me. Draw a cycle and label all the components contained in it. Just what I've just described for you. Then lastly, four. A scalar triangle is an example of dash. You be able to tell me the actual answer there. How many lines of symmetry has an equilateral triangle? And lastly, a triangle that has one of eight angles greater than is called what? So I want all of these answers to be given me via the WhatsApp, the school, uh, my personal WhatsApp. And uh, please, uh, your notes will be sent to you through this platform. Thank you and God bless.